Hello, great ones. Welcome to the relaunching of my YouTube channel. I just completed season one during a whole pandemic of the Living Me Great podcast, and I'm transferring all the episodes over to my YouTube so that my new YouTube audience gets a dose of what my content is about. Please like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy the show. Hello, great ones. Welcome to the Live and Be Great podcast. I'm your host, Latanya Sampson McDonald. I am a life coach and a registered marriage and family therapist associate. And this podcast was created to motivate, educate, and inspire all to live and be great. On today's episode, I want to do my best to help people understand that it is perfectly okay to unlearn toxic behaviors. Let me start off by saying, I feel as though the fear of admitting that you are wrong allows us to keep up the toxic behaviors. And what I mean by allow is that sometimes people succumb to the fear and the fear is so great, especially depending on who they wrong. Definitely when you look at the parent and child dynamic, sometimes when you look at the male and female dynamic, or the race dynamic, the cultural dynamic, admitting that you were wrong is so scary that people just stand strong 10 toes down in the wrongness because of the fear of having to be accountable for your actions and how you contribute to toxic behaviors in the world when remembering the phrase that I've used often before that hurt people hurt people when I say that that is not an excuse to keep hurting people what it is is a reason why the behavior exists now once you know the why, you can then develop a plan to change it. It becomes toxic when you use the why as license to stay toxic. For example, locker room talk. I had a client, teenage, teenage male, that loved sports but hated the culture of sports hated the locker room talk as they say and if you don't know what locker room locker room talk is it's basically chauvinistic (laughs) sexist talk among you know athletes at the time that can be discriminatory and offensive but the locker room aspect is to imagine a team and feeling the pressure, even though, hey, you may have a sister or you may be at the moment imagining somebody talking about your mother, like how these guys in this locker room are talking about these women that are passing. But because you feel the pressure to join in with the conversation to fit in, You just say something that you think they would like that will solidify your place in the locker room. But you know that it's wrong. So when you get older, it's okay to say, 
you know, I was younger because most teenagers, that's usually the time where they're trying to find themselves and they're trying to fit in based off of whatever group they deem as the prize group to fit into. A lot of the time, most of the time, we've all been there. But when you get older and back then you didn't like it. Right. Okay. You can say, oh, I was young. You know, I was just trying to fit in. But if you're older and you're continuing to participate in a lot of a lot of people do still participate in that type of behavior in corporate America and in the locker room or whatever, any group of people that decide to continue to have this sort of toxic language and conversation, you then find yourself using the why as license again to continue. You know, I don't want to be the bad guy is what you say to yourself. I don't want to ruin the mood by telling everybody to stop, but more power to the person that does it. It is okay to do that. It is okay to put a stop to the behavior that you know for a fact is toxic, especially when you decide to be a human in the moment and you really acknowledge those feelings of what if they were talking about my mother, what if they were talking about whoever, when you decide to do that and accept that there's more power in that accountability. Another example We all know that there is a societal standard of beauty when it comes to our women. And the fact that it continues to be perpetuated and it's been perpetuated for years, even though we all know it affects our young people, it affects really all people when it comes to their self-esteem and developing body image issues but our kids start young and I should even say their parents may start young because you learn that behavior from somewhere but also the media plays a role in that too I have seen and I'm sure you probably know somebody that you know perhaps was a female and they maybe was the plus size, you know, or extra love, (laughs) we should say, type of child and, you know, went on a diet, came back, lost weight. And you would think that in all cases, that that child, because they knew what it felt like to be made fun of because of their size, they wouldn't continue to stand by or contribute to that type of toxic conversation and that bullying. But in a lot of cases, you will see that same woman, that same child, because now they're a part of the popular crew or they want to be a part of the popular crew. You will see them turn around and call someone else fat or make fun of them because of their size, I should say, which boggles me because you know how it felt. A lot of people forget how it felt or they want to ignore or they feel like if I completely embrace the toxicity, I won't feel the pain anymore. I'll feel good about myself. People do do that. There's a lot of people that get off that feel some type of power when they're stepping on somebody else. Even if that person came from what they came from, there's an entitlement there to, to power when it shouldn't be that way. And I can't even say, you know, you just use the excuse. Oh, I was young. I was trying to fit in because like the other example I gave, I've seen women do that. I've seen a woman do that recently that used to be oversized or plus side or extra loves, however you want to define it. You know, I want to be respectful, but however you want to define it, I seen 
that person completely forget wants to help other women lose weight. But when they don't get along with somebody that is plus size, you know, probably bigger than them, probably the same size they used to be because they still probably don't love themselves. Even with the new body, they project all of that hate and that anger and quickly they forgot or just don't care how they used to feel. They're just so happy to show off. Okay. I got the newness and you, where are you, where I used to be? Let me put you down for it. It's okay to remember how something felt and to never want to inflict that type of pain onto somebody else. Yes, you can change, you can improve yourself, you can get new friends, whatever the case may be, but it will make such a much bigger impact if you use that platform or you use your new position in my, with my quotation hands when it comes to sitting with the people you've always dreamed about sitting because now you look like them or now you have as much money as them or whatever the case may be. It'll make a bigger impact if you use that time to when you hear the disrespect, when you hear the toxic conversation, to shut it down because you know how it felt. I believe that every human being in some type of way whether intentionally or unintentionally, has contributed to toxic behavior, myself included. For example, I was having a conversation with friends and my husband the other day when I watched this video of a woman being assaulted by a group of men. And What they did was they surrounded her. They blocked her car from moving because supposedly she interrupted a drag race or whatever the case may be. And she was trying to get home and get through the street. They threw a scooter under her car. And when she got out of the car to like chase them off and tell them to move and call the police, one of the men ran behind her and slapped her on the behind. Now, I've had that happen to me plenty of times in my life when I did not consent to somebody touching me. Because I didn't have the education, I didn't even think that I had license to call it some something. You know, like many women, we're kind of used to men touching us inappropriately a lot of women are we normalize this type of behavior a lot of times and don't even realize that that what's we're that's what we're doing and we all sometimes get the complex or I don't want to make a big deal out of it or boys will be boys like that's the excuse that we give to people that mistreat us or violate us or make us feel uncomfortable when we are too afraid to speak up. But by me not saying anything, I would say never saying anything, never reporting it and calling it. I didn't even call it sexual assault. I didn't even think I had the right to. I I just didn't know, you know? And by me not saying anything, that contributed to the next woman being touched inappropriately. Now that was unintentional. My intention wasn't for it to keep happening to other women or other men, depending on the situation. That wasn't my intention, but I have the education now. I know the why. So if it happens again, Because I don't want to be a contributor, a knowing contributor to toxic behavior. I'm going to report it. I'm going to do my part and not stay quiet. And hold myself accountable and hold that person who assaulted me accountable for their actions. This is just a snippet of the bigger conversation I want to have 
on abuse and assault and domestic violence just the just the tip of it but in no way form or fashion am I to blame for somebody touching me nobody is to blame for somebody committing a crime against them in violation you don't blame the victim you hold the abuser accountable. The fear of ruining somebody's life, the fear of somebody not believing you, the the thought that somebody might make it your fault, in no way should that be dismissed or not taken into account when somebody makes a decision to say something or not say something because I understand it, been there, but All I'm saying is the way I'm going to think about it to give me the strength to speak up is I want to think about the next person it may impact if I don't want to ask people to try to do that. Just try it. Just think about the person that you're going to be helping, the person whose story will be similar to yours and is afraid to speak up, whoever that may be. Let that give you the courage to do your part to fight back and to diminish that type of toxicity. If you've listened to any of the previous episodes, you should know by now that I am big on connecting just about every single behavior to childhood because I truly believe if you really look at it, do your research, even do your research on yourself. Everything stems from there. It determines the person you're going to become in a lot of cases, whether you're paying attention to what happened in your childhood or whether you have dismissed it and blocked it out, it's still going to affect you in your everyday life. I said earlier that a lot of times where we learn the fear of admitting that you're wrong is from our parents when they can't say that they were wrong and not just only say that they were wrong and apologize, but actually change their behavior. I'm talking about behavior today, (laughs) toxic behavior, because the best apology is changed behavior. When I try to get my parents to understand their children or the children to understand their parents, whatever age they are, because I have dealt with the younger dynamic to the 30 plus dynamic, 40 plus and their parent, their parent may be 70, whatever the case may be. I've I've counseled all those different dynamics and it's always the same when it comes to understanding each other is to get them to be empathetic to each other's experience and the child won't understand the parent's experience because they're a child until their voice is heard. And surprisingly to a lot of people, vice versa with the parent. If the parent hasn't resolved their childhood trauma, they cannot hear where their child is coming from. And the breakdown in communication between parent and child a lot of the times happens when we are continuing the cycle of dismissing the child's feelings because they are a child and supposedly they don't have real problems. But the parent forgot, they forgot how it felt when they were dismissed, when their problems didn't seem like real problems. And naturally, a lot of parents, when they get to being a parent and they're overwhelmed with whatever they're going through, 
they might say, okay, well, I was raised that way. And now because I'm overwhelmed with these issues, I understand why my parent dismissed me. Or they may have buried it so deep that they don't even acknowledge the feeling or even that they were dismissed when they were younger. They find a way to justify it or other people. They've taken on what their their parent did to justify why I can't think about what I went through, just like with the locker room talk, just like with the, you know, plus size person that's no longer plus size, just like that person who will continue to contribute to the toxic behavior. They forgot how it felt. Their stuff wasn't acknowledged. It wasn't even acknowledged by themselves. So not admitting that you were wrong, not admitting that, man, I can, I think I could look back and remember how I felt when I was your age and I didn't like the feeling. People go into, well, what did you do for, <laughs> for that feeling to happen? Or, um, you don't have real problems. You're just a child. You know, once you start to pay bills, <laughs> you'll have real issues. Like you'll look back on this and think that it was nothing. No, like that's the wrong way to train your kids. You'll have them resentful. And then next thing you know, you'll be treating your grandchild better because you'll wait till then to get it. Because you'll see your behavior, what you taught them how to do, placed onto your grandchild and you won't like it. <laughs> you might not even claim it anymore. And then you'll frustrate your child and then cause another rift in that relationship. Because now they see that you're actually capable of understanding a child's emotion and giving them that time and that space to just feel but you didn't do that for them. Like it's a continuous cycle and that's the road it can go down. It can go down generations and generations and generations. If you do not give yourself permission to correct the toxic behavior, if you find yourself in that situation, so now you're a grandparent and you understand better and you understand where you may have went wrong when it comes to raising your children, it is okay to say, hey, I was wrong back then. I I should have taken more time and more care into what I was doing and how I was raising you affected you. It's okay to do that because that grants healings. It can't erase what happened you can't go back in time but by changing your behavior and even just acknowledging your child before you start to treat the grandchild better acknowledging that it happened to your child could do a world of difference it can cause them in that moment to take a step back and remember you know what i didn't like this let me correct it as a therapist I honestly think that it is my job to want to believe that everybody that steps foot into my office has the ability to um, the ability to unlearn toxic behaviors. You see it happen all the time. You got ex cons, ex gang members who are now on the front lines leading gang prevention nonprofit organizations. You have people speaking up about the injustices of minorities. You have that. They may have had a contribution to the demise of minorities in the past, but you have them doing the work to understand how they contribute and what they can do to change it. You have those people that exist. You have the parents that will take the time to get therapy and do right by their children, by doing right by themselves and getting healed. It does exist. 
So I have to believe in the process of unlearning. And when I say unlearning, I want to break that down for you. When I say unlearning, like I said in the beginning, it's finding out the why, getting the education that you need to understand what you're doing, how it affects the next person and the next person, how it contributes to toxicity in the world. You have to get educated first and you have to be willing to see it differently and to do things differently. That is the process of unlearning and everybody is capable of doing it. Anyone who will be brave enough to see it differently will be successful in unlearning toxic behaviors. The process sounds simple, but for many people, if not most people, that that process of admitting that you were wrong, it traps people, it confines people every single time. I think we all know the saying, everybody who can press play on this podcast and understand what I'm saying knows the saying, oh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. False. (laughs) You can't teach an old unwilling dog (laughs) new tricks. If you're willing, you can learn it and you can do better and you can have a better life. And the reward is much greater when you can say, I'm different now. And I need it to be. And this is who I am today. And I wish, (laughs) I promise you, I wish that there was some way that I can remind people at all times when they decide to do something that might hurt someone, when they make a conscious decision to do it, is to think about the next person be empathetic okay you don't want to be empathetic to strangers because we also have that problem in society where people feel like oh if it doesn't affect me it doesn't affect me at the moment right now or if it won't ever affect me personally then I'll have nothing to do with it false a crime against one human is a crime against all humans no matter who you are where you're from, what age you are, what your genetics are, sex, sexual orientation, religion, all of the characteristics that we classify people in, all the groups. A crime against one human should be a crime against all. So I would say, think about if it happened to somebody you loved, you cared about, Just go back to the basics. Think about if it happened to you. But sometimes I do understand if you have a history of dismissing your own emotions, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, this is be, this will be the hardest task for you. If you have a history of that, because there's no telling how long you've diminished or dismissed other people's emotion because that is what you've been taught and that is what is ingrained in you but it's not impossible again I hope I've given you some good tools some credible tools that you could use to unlearn the pain unlearn the hate unlearn Everything that may have been toxic in your life. I really hope that I have. This is the third podcast of Live and Be Great. So I know my first two, my second episode. No, I should say my first episode and my second episode. There were two different lengths. So I would love to get you all's 
feedback on what you do like. Do you want the longer shows? Do you want the shorter shows? If it doesn't matter, <laughs> you can pick and choose. Let me know by sending me an email at liveandbegreat at gmail.com or wherever you see the link to this podcast. If there is a place to comment, please give me feedback. I thoroughly enjoy it and I want to be useful (laughs) to the world and all the people that take the time out to listen to what I have to say and and gain knowledge and empowerment and inspiration and motivation from this podcast. Now I would like to take the time to acknowledge some of our sponsors. Hi, my name is Taronda Gibbons, and I am the founder of Honoring Moms Day. Moms is an acronym for Memories of Our Mothers. Honoring Moms Day is a one-day event that provides an opportunity for women to gather with others who are experiencing grief and feeling the absence of their mother to celebrate and honor her life. Originally, the first Honoring Moms Day was planned to take place in Atlanta, Georgia, in Orlando, Florida on May 2nd, 2020, and in the future to be hosted in other cities. Due to the ongoing pandemic, Honoring Moms Day has been rescheduled for May 16th, 2020, and the launch will be held virtually. Accessible via Zoom, there are two sessions available, 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and will consist of a panel, activities, and resources for attendees. The mission of Honoring Moms is to provide support to women who are experiencing grief or feeling a void due to the loss of their mother. I was inspired to start Honoring Moms Day after seeing women express their pain on social media every year on Mother's Day. As a part of my healing process and the desire to provide support to others trying to move forward after death, this special day was born. Honoring Moms Day is a celebration of life and will serve as a joyous occasion and a space where those who are grieving can receive resources to assist in their journey of healing and know that they are not alone. Free registration for Honoring Moms Day can be found at honoringmomsday2020.eventbrights.com. You can find us on social media platforms via Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Honoring Moms. Thank you and hope to see you there. Ansley Jukebox Joy is a talented and amazing multidisciplinary artist, teacher, activist, and hip hop ambassador. At the end of this podcast, I will be playing a track from her album, The Assault Mixtape. You can find her on YouTube by typing in Jukebox, J U K E. B-O-X-X, or on Instagram at Ansley Jukebox Joy. Stay tuned for the rest of the podcast. The Live and Be Great podcast will be airing every other Friday. If you have truly enjoyed this podcast, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for giving Live and Be Great a chance please feel free to share like give a review subscribe on whichever platform that you're listening to right now on itunes or apple podcast spotify anchor as well as google play the live and be great podcast is strictly crowdfunded So if you are interested in becoming a supporter, you can click the link in the description or you can go to livingbegreat.com and scroll to the bottom and donate to the Living Be Great podcast today so I can continue to give you good and motivational content. Thank you all for listening and don't forget to give yourself permission to live and be great. Jukebox. 
Jukebox. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. Jukebox, double X, verbal festival. Words confused, ain't you use and get the best of you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. Jukebox, double X, verbal festival. Words confused, ain't you use and get the best of you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. Double X's, a chromosomal message. You see the catches, I am truly invested. I flat out tie your manipulation is resting. Try breaking my mind and in time leave empty handed. Shame, shame, shame. The unsuccessful band. Present some mirage you what a respectful man. So I transmit this knowledge that they ban like music in the stand. Of education, I'm a fan. Feminist I am. If it wasn't for my brain, my soul would never understand. I had to study for the exam. Schools and fall and roll out. Y'all can't do bad, completely pass the class. And you get the credit. Expand your outlook like a college campus. Don't request, require respect for your introspective. Yeah, you guessed it. They destroy our minds with misogynistic propaganda, and we need to take a stand. Jukebox, double X, verbal festival. Words confuse, ain't you using? Get the best of you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. Jukebox, double X, verbal festival. Words confuse, ain't you using? Get the best of you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. We don't care at all about your money or your fame or your name. Them John Doe say, who you supposed to be? Beyonce, tell them no. We would rather go join the Gulabi gang than date a man with a Bugatti and a chain. Excessive material possessions call for questions. Too good to be true, yes, they don't even know you. Ballin' doing princess fairy tale shit like last shoes. Send the flowers, giving candy and buying jewels. All oh, that's sweet. It is till he start getting jealous. Where what he ain't seen? Screams you crazy bitch in front of his fellas. Selling zealous, controlling love. What a self bitch. Knock you to the ground, round one. She grabbed the rail butt. Spits in your face, kick you till your chin swell up. Later calls you up, cries a bunch. Please forgive me for my sins. If you leave, I can't live. I love you so much. Just make sure you don't listen. Jukebox, double X, verbal festival. Words confusing, you using it the best of you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. Jukebox, double X, verbal festival. Words confusing, you using get the best of you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. Learn the signs, guarantee they can't get next to you. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel, Live and Be Great. This channel will produce content that is both podcast and on screen style. So if you're interested and you enjoyed today's show, please like, share, comment and subscribe. See you soon.